Hello, my name is Mike Conklin. I'm the president and founder of the Sentinels of Freedom Scholarship Foundation. Our mission is to provide severely wounded members of our armed forces from Afghanistan and Iraq a scholarship that will include housing assistance, transportation assistance, education assistance, and find them a good job with a, with a quality employer. We also will assign them a group of local businessmen to act as mentors during that four-year period. Our hope is that this will help them transition to becoming an active, positive, productive member of our local communities. The program is national in scope. We hope to place 500 scholarships over the next few years across America. One soldier at a time, one community at a time. Please take a moment to watch the following video. It shows some of these great young men and women, their personal stories of survival and their drive to succeed. They're not different, they're just special. Soldiers returning from war, their task completed, and now they're home. We know of these soldiers and their sacrifices. Most will be coming back to their jobs and families they left behind, just picking up where they left off when their country called. But there's another group of soldiers. Soldiers are facing a life far different from the one they left behind. Life has changed for them in ways they don't yet fully understand. These seriously wounded men and women want very much for things to be as they were, or at least as much as they can be. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Bob Dole, 10th Mountain Division, and I was wounded in Italy in 1945. Every conflict, every war produces disabled veterans, and the war against terrorism is no exception. In my opinion, disabled veterans from this current conflict are really no different from those who came before. But judge for yourself, I'd like you to meet some very special soldiers. My name is Sergeant Steve Clark. I am with Charlie 127 out of Babenhausen, Germany. I am an MLRS gunner, and I lost my right arm from an improvised explosive device. My name is Lee Pedraza, I'm uh, E4 Specialist in the 101st Airborne Division. Uh, I was the 13th Bravo, it was uh, artillery. I was uh, in uh, Mosul, Iraq when I had lost my arm and I hit a landmine. I called my recruiter that on September 12th and I knew there was going to be, I knew that my country needed me. My name is Specialist Danielle Green. I'm an MP. I'm with the 571st MP Company. I lost my hand because I was hit by an RPG in Central Baghdad. Uh, my plan was to join the Army, you know, get a, get a little something out of it, you know, mainly just for the uh, education purpose, you know, get the uh, GI Bill and go to school. My name's uh, Sergeant Chris Schneider, I'm a reservist with the uh, 10 11th Quartermaster Company out of Independence, Kansas. I lost my leg in an accident in Balad, Iraq in, July, er, in January. My name's Staff Sergeant Ryan Kelly. I'm an Army reservist, a member of the 490th Civil Affairs Battalion, and I was uh, assigned in Iraq and wounded south of Baghdad back in July 2003. I wanted to make at least Sergeant First Class, if not First Sergeant. Served my country for 20 years in the most capacity that I felt that I could at that time. My name is Sergeant First Class Joseph Briscoe. I'm a communications specialist with Fit Special Forces Group, and uh, I sustained injuries uh, from our RPG attack. I lost my right arm and received damages to my left arm. Service is doing something that is is totally selfless and putting some other entity, whether it's the military or another person, putting them before you. Giving something of yourself back to co your country and what's provided you freedom. Regardless of what position, regardless of what you do, if you're doing it out of a sense of patriotism, out of wanting to help not only your country, the people that live in your country, 
the, the, the morals and the ideas that this country was founded on. If that's what you're serving for, then it's service to your country. Service to your country for a soldier, I think it's a totally different meaning than if, you, you, if you, you're not a soldier. Before I uh, got activated to go Iraq, I just finished paramedic school and had worked as a paramedic for about two, three months and had, uh, was on a full scholarship at the University of Utah to get a uh, bachelor's in EMS management. Like, you uh, able to hop up? Sure. This is all your extrication. My civilian occupation before, even while I was with the reserves, uh, I was a driver for United Parcel Service. At that time, it was the ideal job for me, and I loved it. Lost it in Iraq. Yes, sir. Thank you. My plan was to be a professional athlete. Uh, I played basketball for the University of Notre Dame from 1995 to the year 2000. I joined the Army because uh, in high school, I was in ROTC. My whole thing was I wanted to learn how to be a soldier. I didn't go to OCS because I wanted to see what it was like to be enlisted in an NCO. So when I did decide to become an officer, I understood the whole foundation of the Army. I took my bread and butter away. I was left-handed, so now I have to learn how to... Hey, girlfriend, how you doing? My degree is in criminology. Having a college degree, everyone advised, everyone recommended that I go in as an officer. However, I felt like I wanted to give it a shot, see if I liked it as an enlisted man first. That was a couple of days before I was injured, in fact. It's a typical weapons cache. When we were ambushed, this is what was exploded in the munition that got me. I don't think there's a positive outcome losing your arm. What drives me now, as opposed to what drove me before, is the value I place on life now. You kind of take it for granted before you're put in the situation that I was put in. I think what drives me more than anything else is not wanting to be perceived as unable to do something. I mean, being disabled. When you think about coming back to America in a body bag or a box, compared to coming back with just a left hand missing and a damaged thigh, it just means the world. And, and that motivates me. This is my uh, below knee prosthesis. Um, my actual residual limb is down to here inside my socket. It's uh, held in place by a pin that's on the end of this liner and it locks in and I tighten it down so there's no chance of it coming off. Like I use my uh, tricep to open it I mean my bicep, if I flex my bicep it closes and if I use them at the same time it switches it to a uh, to uh, turn so oh, it's pretty cool. I, mean, I, can, I can turn it all the way around. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is primarily a daily use knee. You, you go out, you walk around just about anywhere. Uh, the claim to fame for this knee is actually going down steps. Because you can, you can go down steps, step over step with this leg. When I walk around with my prosthetic, or even if I don't have my prosthetic, they're going to stare at me because they won't believe that women are out there fighting too. As much as I like to rush things along, it has only been nine months or ten months, so you know, give it some more time and hopefully I can tolerate all the weight. And, I mean, I can pick, you know, 150 pound person up and walk them on my shoulder without any problem, but if, if I did that all day, I'd probably feel it, so. I'm Captain Daniel Inouye, Infantry Company E, 442nd Regimental Combat Team, go for broke. I was wounded and lost my right arm in Italy in 1945, and I'm currently a United States Senator from Hawaii. Disabled veterans demonstrate qualities like loyalty, discipline, and a strong determination to succeed. They quite often possess skills and abilities that far exceed their chronological age, and these attributes would make a positive contribution to any employer. And consider this. That contribution can be bigger than what we would expect from an able-bodied person. These soldiers have been tested and made stronger. Their strength can make us all stronger. I can say without reservation, there is room in America's workplace for these fine men and women. I think I have to offer an employer a work ethic, um, loyalty, and uh, discipline. 
I think uh, myself and other veterans uh, bring a lot to uh, an employer. We bring a lot of uh, discipline that we had in the service, uh, a lot of training that typical uh, people our age probably haven't had as far as how to manage, how to work with different people in different environments. Veterans are team players. The Army teaches you how to be a team player because when you're out there in combat, you have to depend on that person you know, to cover your back. And, and if you're working on a team project, you can, you can count on that person to be there. They're not going to quit. What I really have to offer that would make me special is an incredible sense of tenacity. I never quit and I never give up and I'll never stop. Being wounded definitely adds a dimension uh, to my employability. I guess the fact that uh, I'm still here and I'm still alive and I can walk and I can still do things. You know, I've, I've learned to deal with, with my loss and uh, you know, there's a lot of things that I can't do, but I can, you know, I can do a lot of things. You know, I, I can tie my shoe with one hand, you know. <laughs> what I have to offer an employer is very simply motivation. I mean, I, to put it bluntly, I was dead, but I'm not now. I didn't want to die. I, there was something that I still needed to do. Whatever it is, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm not going to quit at whatever I do. If it's something that I want to do, if it's something that I feel strong enough about, I'm going to find a way to do it. I'm Captain Max Cleland, 2nd uh, Battalion, 12th Cavalry, 1st uh, Air Cavalry Division. I lost an arm and uh, uh, two legs uh, in Vietnam, near Khe Sanh in Vietnam in 1968. My desire after spending a year and a half in military and VA hospitals was to get out of the hospital, was to get back in life, was to recover and uh, move on with my life, particularly in terms of some kind of role or goal or definition of uh, where I fit in in society. That's a very difficult thing in and of itself. And one of the things that helps most is to get a job, to get some kind of focus in your life to help you move on. Uh, that's a key part of any kind of recovery. After a sense of loss, after a sense of uh, having been uh, to death's door, uh, having been in war, uh, coming back and transitioning is another battle. I chose to be a soldier and soldiers get hurt and I was an adult, grown man when I did it, so I'm uh, not, not owed anything. No, I don't think I'm owed anything. No, I do not think I'm owed anything. It was my duty to go out there and defend my country and I'm proud of what I've done. I've served my country in the way I thought was right. I paid a physical price for it. And uh, I don't like to think that I'm owed anything. I like to think that the American population would see the benefits of my service and my friend's service. I think that on a whole, the only thing that's owed us is respect and a chance to prove that we can fit in. We're not all that different. Yeah, I've got, I'm missing a leg. It's not that big a deal. Once I get done with my therapy, you know, I'll, be, I'll be up and walking with the next man. We are normal in every sense of the word, other than the fact that we had to, an unfortunate experience. Being that we are just normal guys, normal people, uh, we also have, this experience has made us stronger. It's not something that's made us weaker. So we're, we're normal people with, the, with the, the, the benefit of having gone through something and survived something that even makes us maybe even more marketable. People give you the label, hey, you're disabled or you're handicapped, but we're really not. We're still able to go out there and get the job done in any situation, no matter what it is. I am on a mission. And I um, probably have a chip on my shoulder now because people are gonna think uh, she's not gonna be able to do the same thing she, she did it before she lost her left hand. But I'm working hard every day in occupational therapy, physical therapy. I'm learning how to write with my right hand. And when I get out of Walter Reed, you know, there's a whole world ahead of me. And it's just my, it's, 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 it's my choice to figure out what direction Danielle Green needs to go. Just about anyone anywhere that's got a disability and is still getting around in life has developed a, a drive and a motivation, a, a sense of purpose that you're not going to be able to squash. No matter what obstacles they run into, they're going to find a way to get past it. They had to get past a huge obstacle just to be able to function in a normal life. These soldiers and hunters like them are not different. They're just special, and they deserve our help. 
I'm asking you for that help. If you wish to hire a disabled vet, or want to know more about the program, or just want to lend your support, call the number on the screen. It's the least we can do. Thank you very much. Local organization is bringing together the necessary components to help one injured troop start a new life in the in the Tri Valley. TV 30's Chris Kyprios has the story. A large crowd of veterans and other prominent officials gathered at the Bridges Golf Club in San Ramon for one purpose: to welcome home an injured soldier. The Sentinels of Freedom is a San Ramon-based organization which gives wounded troops help in their transitionary process of becoming a civilian and a recently created scholarship will help make that possible. Manny's a double amputee and Chappelle Holmes provided an apartment for him. Uh, we helped get a van for him from Ross Parole and we've got a job for him at SBC. Uh, so we hope Manny will be the first uh, of a many that will help in this program across the nation. Sergeant Manuel Mendoza arrived at the club with a police and fire escort, and as he entered the room surrounded by new friends and family, the crowd raised to its feet and applauded. Mendoza lost his left leg above the knee and his right one at the hip, stemming from an explosion in Iraq, but throughout his recovery process, he remained motivated. He thanked God and his family for all their support and says he's excited to get a new start in San Ramon. There are times that after my initial awake from being injured, that I wondered what was going to happen. But after coming here and receiving this welcome, there's no doubt that I am welcomed home and that I don't have anything to worry about. By now, Manny is accustomed to the spotlight, already meeting President Bush and Defense Secretary Rumsfeld. But the praise didn't stop there, as local leaders revered him for his personal strength. I would say that for those of you that haven't gotten a chance to meet Manny yet, take advantage of it. He is probably one of the most remarkable young men that I have ever met. And I, you know, SCC has given him a job, and I think they are truly a community corporation, somebody that is doing what they believe is right for the community that they live in. But as soon as I get the opportunity to steal him away, I'm going to. And Manny is an inspiration for all of us. To see someone who's gone through so much and still has that sparkle in his eye, that still has that, that smile, that still has that, I'm going to get up and, and do it and overcome these obstacles. It is, we are fortunate and blessed to have him here in San Ramon. As can be inferred by the large cheering crowd and the many kind words, Manny is truly recognized as a hero. And the Tri-Valley hopes that they can welcome home many troops just like Manny back into the community. In San Ramon, I'm Chris Kyprios for TV30. In addition to the 2,200-plus U.S. military deaths in Iraq, more than 16,000 soldiers have been wounded in the war, and hundreds of those have had to have limbs amputated because of the nature of most of the wounds. It's the untold story of the war. Tonight, ABC 7's Eric Thomas salutes an East Bay man who is trying to help. On October 3, 2004, Army Sergeant Manuel Mendoza Valencia's life was changed forever. While on patrol in Sadr City, Iraq, Manuel's vehicle struck an improvised explosive device, or IED. My driver got out of it with a couple burns, a lot of scraping, but uh, I, I took the full force of it and I was amputated right on the spot, actually. He spent the next two months in a coma. Many injured soldiers find it tough to get back into civilian life. That's why San Ramon resident Mike Conklin felt the need to help out. I kind of wanted to get involved and do something bigger than just say, uh, put a yellow ribbon on my, on my car or, or fly my flag. Something really tangible. The father of three soldiers himself, he created Sentinels of Freedom. The goal was to award four-year scholarships to soldiers in need, providing them with housing, a vehicle if necessary, educational benefits, and job training with placement. We're adding to the confidence. You know, they know they. They're coming here, they know that for that period of four years, they can breathe. Mike went knocking on local doors to ask for help. No one we have asked to help has said no. And I think, again, that's a, a 
testimony to the, the, the size of the heart America has for these guys. He found housing from a local developer and a job at UPS for his first scholarship recipient. He had a whole support network built and uh, the missing component was employment and he asked us if we could, uh, if we could do that. Jacob Brown was crushed by a tank in 2002 during a training mission in Germany. I, I can't tell you how grateful I was because that's, believe me, it was on my mind. What am I going to do when I get back? How am I going to pay the bills? I got to go to school. How am I going to work and go to school at the same time? So everything fell into place because of Mike. When it came time to help Manuel, Mike went to SBC, which is now AT&T. We can bring these, the folks in, the wounded warriors, and find positions for them, and they're viable to the corporation. And so I would see that we would be continuing doing this type of work with the Sentinel's Freedom. Mike is now working on his third scholarship. Joseph Bozik lost both legs and an arm when his vehicle hit a landmine. The Sentinels of Freedom expects to have his new life ready for his arrival this summer. For those who've already taken Mike Conklin up on his offer for a new life, they are grateful. The week doesn't go by where I don't thank them for what they've done for me and what they're going to do for everybody else that accepts the scholarship program. He's more than just a friend, so... And I, I believe that he's going to continue to help people with this program and the people that he does help are going to turn around and help other people. Interest in Sentinels of Freedom has grown and now other volunteers are starting up similar programs in their communities. Along the way, Mike Conklin says he'll be there. The way we describe it is we walk at their side and we don't push them and we don't pull them. But if they start to stumble, we're there for them. So we salute Mike Conklin and the Sentinels of Freedom for helping the war wounded get a second lease on life. Thank you for your interest in supporting this vital scholarship program. If you're a corporation or a local citizen and wish to get involved, please go to our website at www.sentinelsoffreedom.org. Our promise and our creed to these men and women is that we will never leave you, we will never forsake you. Thank you again for your help.